right, so guys, here's the deal. I'm still uh, recovering from surgery, so I can't uh, quite get back out on the kayak yet. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to uh, be as productive as I can and uh, show you guys a quick little video of how and why I catch mud crabs. So I'd say the main reason why I use mud crabs versus something like fiddler crabs is because they stay on the hook a lot longer. They're a lot tougher. They're a lot uh, tougher crabs than fiddler crabs. Baitfish will kind of kind of pick away at fiddler crabs a lot, and then you know eventually they'll just they'll just fall right off. And that doesn't. Uh, I mean, that can still happen with mud crabs, but it doesn't happen quite as much, I would say. It's a great bait to use for sheep's head, redfish, you know, black drum. Those three, it's awesome bait, man. It's, it's, you know, it's probably my primary bait of choice in certain situations. Mold and shrimp are really good too, but uh, mud crabs, uh, specifically for those three, are awesome. So I'm also back out here at uh, the same spot as my little outro in the last video that you saw. This is uh, my aunt and uncle's dock and it's low tide right now and I'm gonna search under some oysters for uh, some mud crabs. So so let's uh, let's see what we can do, man. Okay, before I get into this, I just wanna say to be careful with what you're doing and make sure that you're trying to abide by all the laws wherever you are and you know, your specific state. Uh, here in North Carolina, it is perfectly legal to keep mud crabs, but it is not legal to keep stone crabs, which are kind of similar. You can dig for mud crabs underneath oyster beds that are that are in legal areas to harvest them. So for, for example, if you go to an area where there's signs posted up that says, you know, unlawful to harvest crabs, shrimp, mussels, clams, you know, blah, 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 obviously don't, don't harvest them there. But if you're in like, say like a public, like waterway channel and there's no signs or anything, you can uh, for sure dig up underneath the oysters and keep mud crabs. I called up Marine Fisheries about this. A couple of them said it was perfectly fine to do, you know, as long as it's in a legal area. Just make sure that you put the oysters and the rocks back how you found them. Don't just flip them up and then leave them that way. Just, just be cautious and uh, be aware of your environment you know, where you're har harvesting them. Just, uh, just be aware of what you're doing. The one problem though that a lot of people have is trying to distinguish the difference between mud crabs and stone crabs though. So I called up marine fisheries like a week ago. I asked them how to, you know, try to clearly tell the difference between mud and stone crabs. And so the lady actually transferred me to marine patrol and then, so that marine patrol officer couldn't give me an answer. <laughs> so they transferred me, they blah, 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 blah. They transferred me again and then that person couldn't tell me either and so then that person transferred me again so i talked to three mar marine patrol officers and none of them could give me a clear answer but there's a video on youtube uh, where a guy kind of explains it uh, from an article in florida sportsman i think uh, they say the differences or one of the main differences is that stone crabs will have stripes on their legs and kind of a black purplish uh tips on their claws mud crabs will have white tips and they'll have more of like a brownish body and zero stripes or bands or whatever you call them on their legs. Last thing I'm gonna say is that make sure you got everything you need. Uh, you know, I got boots, you know, feel free to roast me as much as you want, but uh, I ain't getting cut up by, by oysters and I'm not gonna lose a, a boot or a shoe back here in the mud. So, you know, make sure you got a glove, at least one. I like to use my left-handed glove so I can, you know, hold the bait bucket with my right hand. And, you know, just make sure you got a bait bucket. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, so again, make sure you got a glove, bay bucket, boots, you know, those, those three main things. So this is what you do. You just basically start lifting up. See, look, there's a little mud crab, but he's kind of he's kind of small, so let me let him go. Oh, there's a mud crab. Look at that. Hello. Okay. All right. Okay, so this guy has white tips on his claws. Okay, he's underneath, you know, mud and oysters. He's got uh, a brownish body. Um, his claws are like a little purple, but they're not like a distinct, you know, purple blackish color. So I think uh, I think he's good to keep. Okay, there's one. Okay. Yep, that's a good mud crab. White tips. Uh, I can't tell if he's got any stripes because of all the mud on him. I don't. I don't think he does. That's a mud crab. Oh my god, dude, that's a giant mud crab. Look at that. Whoo, buddy. That is a big mud crab. Look at that. Oh, he's missing a uh he's missing a claw. I didn't even do that. Oh gosh. Okay, well uh he's got white tips on his claws. 
I'm hoping you guys can see that. Um, yeah, that's that's a big. So there's my thumb, just giving you a comparison size. Yeah, that's that's a big mud crab. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep this guy. You can catch a lot of crabs by doing this. Honestly, if you just stay consistent and you just keep digging, but just uh, like I said, just try to put the oysters kind of back. These are these oysters are kind of loose and not really stuck in the ground, so I don't think it matters that much. But the ones that you pull up out of the mud, try to put those back. Oh, that's a mud crab. Look at that. Yep, there we go. He's super muddy, but that's a that's a good size one. Double check in a second, make sure that's uh, not a stone crab. There you go. There's a mud. Oh, oh, come here. Come here. Oh, he's trying to pinch me. Look at that. It's good to grab them by their claw so they can't really let go, buddy. So they can't really pinch you. But he's got white tips too. Uh, he's super muddy, but he, I don't think he's got stripes on his legs. He's got a brown body, so he's a mud crab. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you what you can do after you get all your mud crabs and your bait book it's all dirty like this. You kind of use the opportunity when you're by water to uh, you know get get your uh, your bait bucket and your crabs all clean. You know you can even get some water in there and then kind of drain out the mud. There's there's not really much in mine right now, but this thing can get dirty sometimes. All right guys, so I got a little over probably a dozen mud crabs right now. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, compared to feather crabs, I'm gonna tell you right now, I would much rather have 20 or 30 mud crabs than like 100 feather crabs, uh, you know, all day, any day of the week. You know, that, you really don't need too many. Uh, if you rig them up right and you and you stay consistent with how you're catching your sheep's head and your, your black drum and your redfish, then, you know, that'll, that'll last you a long time. That'll last you all day. Okay, so I'm gonna work my way back to the car and then kind of show you what I like to use and how I like to use um, these mud crabs. So you got, a, you got a bottom sweeper jig, right? Everybody knows about these. If you don't, you're kind of living under a uh, rock. No pun intended. This will be a little more difficult. Okay, so quickly, grab the claws so they can't pinch you. I like to, I like to grab them like this, okay? I don't know if you guys can see that, just like that. So what you do from here, break off their arm right here, or their, sorry, their little claw, okay? And then from there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your bottom sweeper jig, is you grab your bottom sweeper jig, and then after you break off one of their claws, like right there, there should be a little socket. So you use your bottom sweeper jig, you stick the point through that little socket, and you go out, and it should be just like that. So it kind of looks like the tip on the, uh, the end of the hook kind of looks like one of their legs. It's a really good way to rig them up. So through the socket and then out their little uh, their little body, kind of like their back, like right there. This is the perfect size mud crab for a sheep's head. That, that's what you want right there, right about quarter size. That is like money for sheep's head. And you know, of course, black drum and redfish too. That's, <laughs> that is candy for them. All right guys, that's what I got. I'm gonna get going because it's hot and uh, I'm sweating like crazy. I'm ready to get out of here, so. So hopefully somebody benefited, blah, 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 blah. Hopefully somebody benefited from this. You know, if you liked what you saw, consider subscribing and uh, all that jazz. If, uh, if I did screw something up, if I did catch a stone crab by accident, please put it down in the comments. Uh, I don't try to break the laws. I know what happens sometimes on accident. But uh, yeah, as far as like the info that I've, I've received and the research that I've done, those were all mud crabs. So yeah, man, just, just try your best. Abide by all the state laws and, and uh, go catch some fish with it. <laughs> okay, one last thing I almost forgot to mention. Uh, I like to use mud crabs for two reasons mainly. First one being their durability. And what I mean by that is that they'll stay on the hook a lot longer than filler crabs and cut up blue crab depending on the time of the year. Like summertime, you know, all the bait fish, they'll pick away the blue crab meat and then you'll have nothing but the shell left. And that's, you'll have no idea. So, like I said, I'd much rather have 20, 30 mud crabs versus, you know, 100 filler crabs. It's, much better bait in my opinion. Okay, the second reason would be the weight difference. Fiddler crabs are really light. Sometimes you can't even tell that they got off. Mud crabs, there's like a little bit difference in the weight and you can kind of tell when they're on or when they're off. It's, uh, it's not that big of a difference, but to me it makes a huge difference for when I'm sheep's head fishing, so. And you know, you can use mud crabs for redfish like I do a lot. Throw, you know, put them under a popping cork, you know, put them on a Carolina rig, it'll work. You will catch fish with them. All right, hope you liked it, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. See you next time.